Hey world, it's your boy Pat, coming back at you with the next episode of the Hollow Down Cigar Lounge Podcast. Back with us this time, it's our boy Derek. Pizza, me. Are Is you that into copyright? I don't know, actually. <laughs> Only if you know the proper pronunciation, pronunciation of what he just said. Not lined up with my poor enunciation. So, anyway. What you just said. Whatever I just said, yeah. So, uh, we're back this time, got some uh, good conversation, um, half of it we're winging it like we always do because that's just what we've turned this show into, is a good time and good conversation. So <laughs> It's not how it started out. It's not how it started out, but I'm a freaking on that <laughs> shit. So, uh, you know, when you have a good show that you think's a flop and everybody likes it, you know what, that's what you keep doing. Yeah, man, train wrecks are fun to watch. Train wrecks are fun to watch. And, just kidding, uh, that, that sounded terrible. Uh, <laughs> not actual train wrecks. Metaphorical train wrecks. Yeah. They knew, I know what you meant. We're going to make sure they well, know. Sure. You. Yeah. So, I mean, just like last week, I think, you know, Brett said we just derailed it in like the first three minutes. Like, mm-hmm. we it eventually got back to what we were going to talk about, but it took a while. <laughs> Whatever. I'm not going to say that wasn't on purpose either. Oh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I knew y'all were, <laughs> y'all were tag team, and it just is what it is. So, while we start talking about some shit, uh, we're going to smoke a uh, good stick today. So this is back in the vintage line of Rocky Patel. So camera's closer. Hopefully it'll focus because the last time it hadn't been wanting to focus on the camera. Camera's got ADD. Camera does have ADD. Focus, boy. Focus. So this is Rocky Patel's vintage 1990 blend. Uh, several episodes of back... Um, I did another one of their vintage line. Go back and find it. I've got a couple more in the future that I also want to review on here as well. Um, I think there's four, if I remember right. I think it is 90, 92, 99, and uh, 2002. I think that's right. I could be wrong, but I believe there's four different ones that are um, pretty good blends. Have not had some I haven't had, some I have had, some I haven't had in a while. So figured it was a good time to talk about them, smoke them again. So first things first, we've got to cut the cigar. I went with a V cut. He's hitting up guillotine cut, straight cut. This is all I have, man. Well, that's what you like too. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I don't know if I, if I like it. I don't. I mean, I can't really prefer it if it's all I have. Oh, that's fair. So I'd experiment with you. Someday, you know, let you kind of, ooh. So, no ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is a box pressed. Uh, it does have a pretty good deep shoulder on it, so I'm comfortable doing a V-cut. So, first thing before we start talking about it is toasting the foot. And as I always say, this is one of the best parts of the show. So, first cutting the light. about the only time we're going to shut the hill up. I did a poor job of rotating. Good stuff. But you're right, it's probably about the only time we kind of shut up for a minute. It's got a good uh, dark first pull. Like, not super dark, not harsh dark. It's like complex dark. Mm -hmm. So let me read to you guys what Cigars International says. Oh, hell. About, (laughs) if we make it there. Come loose a little bit. Need a repair. That was my fault. It was a bad cut. Ah, screw it. Yeah, if it's just... Oh, God. Nope. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> if, it's, if it's a separate cap, you're good. What gets you is if it's the, the cigar rollers that have been doing it for 20 years and they don't make a separate and it's part of the whole wrapper and they nope. just curl it. And I pull that off and it's... Well, that's completely my fault. So this is the Rocky Patel Vintage 1990. Honduran Origin. It's got a nice blend into it. It's got an average rating in the cigar world of about a 92. 
So we'll see how we feel. You know, we don't do scores on the show, but um, we'll see how we feel about it. Um, Derek's here, so we'll see if it's a yep or a nope. So uh, basically, this is a anomaly in the cigar world where most of the time you get some flavor on the wrapper, but your your true profile is coming almost completely from your fillers and your binders. So this one's different. On purpose, the wrapper is one of its key flavor ingredients. So the 1990 blend is a mix of Dominican and Nicaraguan Ligero draped in what they call a tantalizing natural broadleaf wrapper from Honduras. So not your Pennsylvania or your Connecticut broadleaf, the Honduran broadleaf. Normally you see Hondurans more in your binders. You know, uh, it's not as much in the wrappers as some of your, your other ones are. It's flavor profiles, which it said up front was a hint of mint and licorice. I can kind of work towards the licorice a little bit. And not enough to smelling. But I don't get a minty at all. Mm -mm. But says that once it uh, levels out that it progresses to more of a leather or a toast with notes of sweet espresso and a little cocoa. So that we'll find out very shortly, but I get the I get the licorice feel. Not enough to say that it's licorice, but you know when you eat licorice, you get that, that kind of like after bite just enough that kind of lingers. Yep. That's kind of what's happening for me. Mm. So draw is perfect. Not too loose, not too tight. I like the double band and all the all the Rocky Patel vintage series has a uh, their vintage band in the year and a color coordinated top. So like they're all different colors too. Huh. But the logo is the same, just the background color is different. So far, it's a yep. It's a yep. Yep, I like this one. Let's see if you pull out any of those flavors as it comes. But that's it. That's a that's a good first start because I mean it's. I know we're just starting the cigar, so we'll see how the construction holds up, but that uh, initial light is pretty damn even. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Spoiler, I'm not gonna be able to pull out any of those notes. You'd be surprised. I would. What was it, uh, it wasn't on cameras, uh, oh, which one did I take over to your house uh, a few months ago? It wasn't, it wasn't the factory smokes, it was whatever we took over with it. And I told you what it was going to be like. There's no way I was going to taste the cocoa. And, and you're like, oh, shit, there it is. I mean. I don't think that was me. Oh, it was you. Because Shelby thought you were just making it up to be nice because you were smoking a cigar I gave you. So there was a whole conversation about mm. it. There's also a lot of alcohol involved. No. So. <laughs> you're making that up. I would never. You would never. I don't I don't drink. Doesn't drink at all. Ever. Oh. Mm -hmm. Never. This is water. Uh, it was a hard day at the gym. I just need to hydrate some more. <laughs> By the way, just disclaimer, I don't have like a mental disease or anything. If you see me just doing weird shit with my head, my neck hurts. Sorry. <laughs> would, you, would you work out a little little too tight there? Or is it just something? I don't know. Today's just an off day. Pulled it at work or some shit or any idea? No, it was definitely at the gym. Oh, okay. Just, just one of those days. Yeah. I guess it's better if you know where it came from other than some unknown. Mm. That's what makes it tough to kind of recover out of. You don't know where the hell you did it at. But today's kind of a combination day. So uh, first things first. So uh, by the time I edit this, it'll be about a week ago. Went to the Lone Star Cigar Fest in Fort Worth. I uh, was moved over to the Cigars International Lounge, the one on the Fort Worth side. Um, great event. Uh, was crammed in a small space because we were anticipating bad weather, so they moved the venue from somewhere else to there. Um, still did a damn good job making it work in a, a lounge versus an, an event venue space. Um, I'd say I learned about some great sticks. I learned about even some Roman whiskey that I'm not gonna go find. I learned of a new scotch, uh, Deanston, I think it's Deanson's if I'm pronouncing it right. It's a virgin oak. They make the scotch in uh, in barrels that are classified quality enough for bourbon. You know, they have strict mm -hmm. guidelines for bourbon. Oh, yeah. So strict. they're they're virgin oak barrels, never touched, never blended, never anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it's not a blended scotch, it's straight 
And the whole time I tasted the shot, I was just waiting for that like nice peaty bite on the back of it. You get the build up, you get the warmth, and it just like dissipates. <laughs> Sick. Great. See, I like the peaty bite though. Oh, I do sometimes too. But it's about the only way I can take my scotch now. It's like give me the strong stuff. Give me peaty, oh, you, smoky. You actually want the bite? Yeah. Otherwise, it's you know why scotch? I would just drink any other whiskey. I mean. I can't argue. I mean, to each, to each his own. That's just. I mean, I do like it too, I but you know, it. it's like you know, there's, there's some other ones. Like my favorite Scotch is still probably uh, Shivas, because it's got a good balance of flavor and it's still got a bite on the end. Mm -hmm. But there's some other Scotches I like that that it just have full flavor and don't have the bite. So it kind of depends, you know, what I'm in the mood for, I guess. Huh. But the event was fantastic. If you've never been to a cigar festival, uh, highly recommend it great return on value for the price so you're paying an entry fee and kind of like wine and rum tastings where they're letting you taste this stuff which we still had probably forty dollars worth of shots that we didn't pay for tasting all this stuff uh you have various cigar vendors that are giving you samples um it could be something that's a popular blend it could be a new blend whatever um there was a couple brands there that I'd never heard of um, like Ross Family, they're a new brand. I'd never heard of them before, so they've got their intro stick. Um, Epic Cigars, I'd heard of, never seen it, never bought it. The owner himself was there, so I got to meet him. Cool dude. Um, gave us uh, his Epic Maduro. Um, so it was a pretty good way to explore and kind of get into the world of some other cigars that I probably wouldn't heard of. And you know, you got your, your top five, six brands that everybody knows but there's a whole lot of you know manufacturing happening on other brands especially ever since you know of course this is not recent history but since everything left Cuba as the only cigar place in the world now you've got the availability for more people you know to, to kind of get in the game so if you have not gone to a cigar fest recommend it um, cigar fest is just one of them there's ours the Lone Star cigar fest there's several Depending on where you live, I know they're all over the country. So um, if you've ever been wanting to go to a cigar fest and we're on the fence about it, recommend going. So I kind of got lucky last minute, just happened to be off when I found out about it because Justin Lowry, who was in the Hollow Down family, told me about it. And uh, so I got to meet up with him. So it's pretty cool getting to catch up with somebody that I met because of this group. So that was a pretty good deal. Um, just kind of lucked out that uh, happened to be in the same region and we were heading to the same place to uh, attend this um, attend this festival, so pretty cool. Um, again, thanks Justin for hooking me up with the information because I didn't know that there was one in Fort Worth, so I've, I've always been having to drive somewhere to go somewhere, so pretty cool. I'll have to take, you, take, me, take you with me on one sometime. Good stuff. You know my day's off. Yeah, yeah, do, do I? Do they exist? Yeah, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> Normal so people's. Yeah, Normal I'm people's the one that doesn't up. have. Yeah, you're, <laughs> your your times are weird, but your days are normal. Yeah, something like that. Not mine. Well, normal ish. No, I tried. Yeah, but it's, it's all right. My it's mine is mine is definitely uh, rotational. So whatever. So, uh, are you a NASA nut at all? No, I'm not either. Um, I know Matt is, so I'll probably, if I get him back on the show, I'll probably bring this up again just because I'm curious what he'll say. <laughs> but um, I, I guess I'm one of those guys I like the highlights, right? It's like, you know, you hate football, but you want to know the score. Well, I'm not really a NASA nut, but I like the, like, hot points, you know? It's like I probably wouldn't have cared so much about the work up to go on the moon, but I probably thought it was badass the day I finally got to the moon. Like, the, the hot shot, right? Yeah. So, uh... The Osiris Rex was a module that they sent to an asteroid like seven years ago, and it just landed back in Utah. And they say, and I'm not smart enough to credit or discredit this, so say this with a grain of salt, is they say that it's an asteroid that's like on the outer rim of the galaxy that has a projected orbit to potentially collide or grace Earth like it's the year 2180 or something. So it's nowhere near, because it's still way off and you know anything can change it can hit something else and divert whatever but if it's set on its current path so they sent a probe to it 
somewhere in the the realm of like three billion miles, which you know in space you travel pretty damn quick. Yeah. And uh, took a bunch of dust dust samples and came back trying to see what the makeup is of something that's so far away. And to my knowledge, um, at least that I could find in some searching, is it's apparently like the first or the farthest we've gathered actual material from any other spatial material. I don't know if I want to call them planets or not. I'm not a scientist. I'm, I'm not either. I know just enough to be interested, but I don't know if I'm speaking the right terminology or not, but... It does sound like we need Bruce Willis. <laughs> Hurry up, get him before he's gone. Right. <laughs> so, um, they they named the asteroid Bennu or Binu. I'm not sure how they're pronouncing it. B-E-N-N-U. So, I'm just kind of curious because that's all the information that I was able to find right now, but I think it's even if I don't, I'm not a scientist, I don't care. I think it's kind of cool that, you know, we're able to, we at least have the technology to unman to travel that far and acquire some data material. So I think that's kind of cool. You know, it's like the first Star Trek probe. We can't fix our shit here, but we can reach out there and find new problems. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's all humans are good for, finding the next problem to oh, fix. Yeah. Right? Fix. The next problem to fix. And if there ain't a problem to fix, that's a problem. And what do you do with problems? You, you fix, fix them. them. <laughs> or so you find them. If your problem is that you don't have a problem, what's the solution? You find a problem. There you go. <laughs> Some people get paid a lot of money to do that. <laughs> Just to find problems. Politicians. <laughs> hey, by the way, it's voting season. So, oh, no, we're not going to do that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I stressed on this show and this channel, it was uh, not going to be politically based. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Especially. I mean, we all have our views. You know, it's like Wu lost his filter probably before he ever exited the womb. So he, he has, the, <laughs> he will tell you how he feels. Yeah. Okay. And that's cool. I'm There's not no going to question marks there. As long as we don't cross any like illegal bounds or completely unethical bounds, everybody's entitled to your opinion. But we're not going to be politically sponsored. I mean, I've said some things before that, like, you know, you might have an idea of where I fall. Well, we're not going to make it on the show, so, you know, I'll make it's jokes about, it's about it. It's not what it's about. Um, this is about smoking cigars and drinking. And it's that side I didn't like well when it started off, so I'll fix it. That's my air, not the cigars, because it's burning perfectly fucking even. <laughs> I just missed the corner when I lit it, so it started a little off. And on that note, I've seen several posts in some other groups lately that have, you know, you'd have one line of the cigar burn up here and the other side's like a quarter of an inch off and people are curious why, why they're burning so uneven. If it's a storage issue, they're freaking out. Perfectly fucking fine. You know, if you're anywhere in the vicinity, it's fine. It's still an organic material. Huh. You know, if this leaf on this side has just a little bit more moisture than this side, it's going to burn just a hair slower. Like... Don't freak out about those things unless you start getting, you know, one that's just complete cattywampus. Mm -hmm. You know, then you may have a construction issue. You could have lit it off, or you didn't draw straight, or your code was like now you get into variables. Yep. But if you have just a little bit, kind of like the one that we showed uh, an episode or two ago, where you know I had one that just had a little air pocket, and I showed you as an example because people have been, I swear that that's a tunneling issue. No, um, don't freak out of the slightest thing. It's I know we're paying potentially good money for these scars, but they're still a man-made, hand-rolled product, at least in real cigars, mm -hmm. and it's still organic material that we're enjoying. So nature's going to have its way, no matter how much quality control we put in this. So it's right. going to happen. And I've always heard like if you start to get, well, Supposedly, like every couple of puffs, you're supposed to rotate it like a quarter turn or something. I've never found that that helps. It's If it's going to burn uneven, it just <clears throat> burns uneven. So there's theories behind it, and I'll, I'll agree. I've not noticed myself purposely, and it may be because I have like a more casual, small... Like, I'll do a puff, puff, draw, mm -hmm. right? So, like, maybe that's why, but there's theories between different cuts and different rotations... You know, it's just like drinking a milkshake, right? If you have the straw in the center of your mouth, you're going to get a really good strong pull. But if you try to, you know, put the straw on the side of your mouth, it's, it takes more work. You're a weirdo. Right? 
Right. But that's not how your airflow works, right? Yeah. So it's just a good example. Like, try to suck, you know, shake on the straw of the corner of your mouth. It takes a little bit extra work. It feels weird. It's awkward. Your airflow didn't come that way. Same concepts. Just, just you know, so do that. the idea is that if you rotate it, you know, you're leveling out your air pool in case you have a very... But personally, I haven't realized the difference. Some people, I understand completely that with a V-cut, there's a little bit of cross draw in the air. But I personally don't really recognize the difference over like a punch. I can tell if it's tighter or wider. Like I can tell that a punch is going to be a little bit tighter than a straight cut. That I can tell because there's more... There's more airflow, but as far as the difference, I personally just don't see it. But I know there's science and testing and guys that have been smoking, you know, for 75 years that'll tell you that it does it. So you may experience that. I just don't. You think it was one of those situations where there wasn't a problem and someone had to find a problem? No, because we don't do that. No. We don't do that. Mm -mm. Not at all. There's, there's no way in hell we created a problem to make a problem. <laughs> Humans don't do that, dude. Nah, stay out of the politics. <laughs> stay out of the politics. I'm just talking about humanity. We're not even into politicians. We're just talking about straight <laughs> humanity. Well, let's be real. Those are the worst ones. I mean, I refrain to disagree. <laughs> Anybody understanding the common English language understands what I said. Never mind. <laughs> Moving on. It's like, it's like, like Brett said after he went on a, on a roll the last show, I was like, okay, that's it. I'll just see myself out. <laughs> we, we, we've gone down a rabbit hole. My bad. <laughs> well, sorry. I apologize. I, I knew the two of y'all were going to be uh, enjoyable together. That, that was oh, a, my God. That was a fun show. Like I, I told my wife when I got home, I was like, I can't wait till he airs that one. That one got off the rails real quick. Real quick. And uh, It's like he asked me how long was the intro. I'm like, dude, I don't even know. The intro. Because I don't know if we made it through the intro ever. I think the intro started about 20 minutes after we started just bullshitting. Probably about right. And a lot of the good stuff that didn't make that video is probably somewhere in your archives. Oh, it, you know, I... I've started, you know, if, if we have, we don't always have it, but if there's something funny that I pull for an outtake, I'm going to throw it at the end, you know, so mm -hmm. it, the last, the last episode I actually put up an outtakes thing at the end, so um, I've done things in the end of the past, you know, where, you know, you've had a couple lines, somebody else had a couple lines, <clears throat> you know, you know, I've made fun of Ryan because after we quit, he does the whole like, hey, stop, like, you know, I, there's, but we just like did some, a lot of dumb shit. Yeah. I could probably make a whole episode of outtakes if I actually went back, but, you know. Especially with that last episode we did. That's at least half an episode. Easily. But just without the cigars. Maybe if you because of how cigars much, for drinking, we have an episode. True. <laughs> but, you know, because of how much data it takes up. Like, once I get done editing, you know, I'll pull the outtakes and I'll delete the raw footage just because that, that would eat up some hard drive space in a hot minute. You know, multiple cameras, multi, you know, the audio source and everything. Yep. So once I edit it, once I get saved, once I make that episode, I'll go back and delete it, you know. So, sorry, you but, missed uh, out. Should have been here. It was fantastic. Tried to tell you. Fantastic. <laughs> now, what's real fun is uh, I need to get, oh, we've said this, but I, I know I said I wanted to get you and Matt, but like if I get that three of y'all together, because, you know, I've seen the three of us communicate, mm -hmm. you know, I can just imagine, like, just throwing you that mix. No. Fantastic. I do. Hold on. So, I know I've mentioned doing an episode at the lake before. Yeah. Dude. Um, I can barely, like, I can barely get, like, I still don't actually know how it'll happen, but I don't know how to pull off getting all four of us here at the same time, because all four of us have different schedule types. So, it will take some work and pre-planning to line up a day or even a one and a half hour stint. It'll happen, but it's going to take some work. No, I'm talking about it. you just take off a weekend, come meet me at the lake, and I've got a buddy that'll smoke cigars and bullshit with us. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. And look, I start drinking at like 9 a.m. when I'm at the lake. God dang. I mean, what I else mean, are you going to put in your coffee but whiskey? Moon pie, moonshine? You bring it. It's going to make a we good learned, episode. We learned what this. I'm, what I'm getting at. It's going to make a great episode. Well, Maybe you're going to have us talking time. about this moon pie moonshine for a hot minute, my friend. <laughs> I, still, I still probably need to order some because Jesus Christ. But yeah, so... Um, of course, as you know, this is a... Um, 
dissident sponsored podcast, regardless of what what cigar we are um, enjoying at the time. That's personal review, but um, Sin and Josh Coburn do sponsor the podcast, so um, coming up, you know, pretty good friend on her part. So, as always, we always have some random information. Uh, would like to share with you guys and you know we started with some dissident information started with some history and wanted to introduce you to the brand but I think we got one that's pretty freaking relevant that I just think is hilarious as fuck so uh I think it's time for another dissident disruption what do you think it's just like can we get a musical cue in here like a guitar solo what kind of what kind of solo we want something metal as fuck (laughs) dissident cigars (laughs) Let's do it. <laughs> so check out this for this week's Just in a Disruption. All right, so this is this is a uh, pretty funny whether you are a football fan or not. If you don't know what I'm about to talk about, you've been under a rock, whether you are a football fan or not. So I must have been under a rock then. Well, you kind of knew half of the details <laughs> I was talking about, but like that's the thing. Like well, the team we're about to talk about, you don't watch, no, and you still like knew. <laughs> Something had happened. I knew two names involved, and that right. was it. So, people are already predicting that this year's NFL MVP is going to be Taylor Swift. Yep. Who is not a football player. The, that you know of. That we know of. Mm-hmm. She could be. She might be in that laundry football league, she, for all I know. She seems pretty unstoppable. Nice. She is pretty unstoppable. Um, if you are unaware of the happenings... Kansas City Chiefs tied in Travis Kelsey reportedly dating Taylor Swift and the world got wind of this at a um, game earlier this year. I think it was the Jets game. I think. I didn't write it down. So I think that was the first game because since then she's been seen it, you know, several and she's even gone to the Eagles game with, you know, Kelsey's mom because his brother Jason is a center for the Philadelphia Eagles. So like, She's definitely getting in with Mama Kelsey, which is a smart move to do if you want to be with somebody, get in with the mama. Well, most of the time. But the, the world kind of got wind when the press box like went up and got video of her in the booth next to Mama, clapping with Mama, dressed in cheese gear like it was stupid obvious. And all the uh, Swifties in the world freaked the F out. Oh, now is where we start throwing the sensors? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't want to say, you know, too many F's in a row. It's your show. Guys like guys like guys like us would understand the sequence. Like you can have it a whole a whole sentence that's pretty much just. Oh yeah, you're a marine. I'm sure you heard. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you probably heard worse than that. <laughs> like it's that's a whole other conversation. But yes, um, so what's making her the MVP is and not Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift is the, I think it was the next game, because I know it was the, the Chiefs and the Bears game. You know, most non-Super Bowl football games have like, you know, one or two million viewers, sometimes three viewers. That next game, just because people were trying to see if Taylor Swift was going to be at the game again, was over 24 million viewers. That's a lot of power that woman's got. The amount of money and ratings that just raked in. Just because she was going to be there. She wasn't performing. She wasn't interviewing. She was just there with a couple friends sitting up in the stands. But everybody wanted to see if she was still going to be there for Travis. Mm -hmm. Like, 24 million. Ridiculous. What are the odds she plays for the Super Bowl this year? Could be possible, but they already selected the uh, halftime show this year, which... uh... Oh, hell. Was it Usher? Maybe. Like, it was going old school a little bit. Uh... 
have to check in a minute because I, I think it's extra. But that uh, that would be funny. With a surprise guest appearance from T. Swift. <laughs> Some somebody said that uh, they're gonna set the Super Bowl, at the Super Bowl in Kansas City next year, preset her as the halftime show, and then like normal Taylor Swift profile about three months before the Super Bowl, they'll break up and she'll introduce her brand new song about their breakup on the field <laughs> while he's there. <laughs> so cool. Like, you know, so artists much. like her and Adele, that's their best work is whether they are legit or they are fabricated, only those people will know, but like their best song is like emotional tragedy. I'm, I'm assuming that's probably right. It's not my, not my genre. It's not my genre either, but Jesus, I can't, you know, it's everywhere. Yeah. You know, not to say, I was about to say, if anyone like God, leave it, because that ash is holding on for dear life. Yeah. I also need something to do with my hands. That's fair. I fidget a lot, I've noticed, since I started doing this podcast. I think the first episode, I was like, look like I'm tweaking. What am I doing? <laughs> you did. He's like, man, these people are going to think I'm on something. Yeah, there's a lot of caffeine. You just, just don't like sitting still. That's all it is. You got to be I doing guess. something. Yeah, what do they, they call it? Neat. Uh, non-exercise, blah, 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 whatever. I have no idea yeah. what it's called at all. Yeah. I, I know burn, what you're talking I about. I burn a lot of energy doing nothing. Yeah. <sighs> Not sure. But yeah, the... Uh, this Taylor Swift thing is ridiculous because tra- uh, Travis Kelsey's jersey sales have gone up like four or five hundred percent in the last like three weeks. I mean, he was already a top selling future Hall of Famer. Like his sales are already legit. Like he didn't need the boost. NFL did not need the boost, but Jesus Christ, they got one. I think he got like an extra million viewers on his personal Instagram. Not counting Taylor Swift's like. His, and I guarantee you half those people don't know a thing about football. Some do, but no they're just trends, you know, following the trends of Taylor Swift. I get it. It's insane, man. I get it. Music, pop stars. Mm-hmm. It's like a, you know, like the the whole, you know, even the old school throwbacks with. Backstreet Boys bringing their stuff back and NSYNC's trying to bring theirs back. I'm like, you're just bringing up the nostalgia and the money and the fame and the excitement of all these people that were like, ah! You know? Yeah, it's just remake everything. There seems to be a lot of money in that. Movies, video games. Let's just recycle all the old shit we used to love. Of course. I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard that um, NSYNC may not be coming back because Justin tried to pull the the fame card and said that he was worth more than the rest of his group so he wouldn't perform unless he got a bigger paycheck I'm like dude that I understand like your career took off but you can't do a show with all five guys without the other four so like no matter how good you are you can't do that without them so freaking idiot mm-hmm. but whatever you it's know one of those things you're pop star fan you're not supposed to say that part out loud right <laughs> just you know ask your agent be like hey can you See if you can pull something off. Like you don't just be like, "Hey guys, I'm better than y'all." So either give me some of your share, or we're not doing it. Like that's fucked up. I forgot what movie I watched with him recently, and it was a newer movie. And I was like, mm, "No, yeah, it's you I really mean, disappeared." And thank God, because the movie wasn't great. He's got some that are decent, some that are good because of his name. No, Reptile is the name of it. It was a really weird movie. I haven't even heard of that one. It's it's one of those whodunits. Like, you know, the, the actual Facebook movie wasn't bad, but that's because he was actually kind of, you know, there. So, I mean, his, his portrayal there was good. But, like, he's had some other ones that are just kind of like, it's hit or miss. Mm. And he got the role because of who he is, you know? Whatever. But, no. you know, pop stars, they do things to people, man. I mean, music does something to you. See, so you like, this whole deal has nothing to do with the music industry, but because she made an impact on so many people musically they're going to follow her trend in life you know it's like the Kardashian effect you really don't give a damn what they do but if you got the, like the people that got hooked on them when they started mm-hmm. hooked on them 20 whatever years later like you have nothing to do with their life but you get invested with people because you know they either sang one song or did one thing that connected with you that long and, huh. 
you know, music, music gets us all. So, I mean, I get it. It's fun to talk about it. I think it's insane. Yeah, I think it's the pop culture but, altogether. Like, pop music, pop stars and shit like that. Like, the kind of music I listen to, never going to get any attraction. There's there's never going to be any attention on that other than negative. Been that way since, I don't know, Ozzy bit the head off a bat. Fuck it up for the rest of us. Way to go, Ozzy. Thanks, Ozzy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's time to hear metal. Oh, that's that screaming shit. They worship the devil. No, motherfucker. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to find this picture if I can because I saw it scrolling Facebook earlier today. Actually, it said uh, it was a an old vintage photo of Ozzy and John Lennon writing some music together back in like the eighties, and it was a picture of Snape and Harry Potter, and I was like. Pretty damn accurate, because the you know long black cloak, the long hair, and then you got Harry Potter there looking up, young, smiling with the glasses. I was like, this is pretty. Whoever saw that in their head was uh, onto something. I'll just see if I can find it again, because I was just scrolling. I didn't save it or anything. If I can find it, I'll put it up in here. I just thought it was hilarious. <laughs> See, so, yeah, I have no idea how distant and disruption has anything to do with football, but you know what? That's how we're going to roll the show. It was disruptive. It was very disruptive. <laughs> <laughs> so, which, you know, <laughs> said you never know what we're going to say. Um, uh, there, there is some dissident related stuff that we'll talk about from time to time, but sometimes I just want to be funny and off the wall and who gives a shit? Yeah, that's... that's... Yeah, I see your notes here. <laughs> just, just, just looking at it on paper, like, what? Yeah, it's like, why does this have anything to do with it? It doesn't. It has absolutely nothing to do with anything whatsoever cigar related. Yep. But half the conversations we talk about have nothing to do with cigars. No. We're here to enjoy a good time and tell you what we think about this cigar. And trust me, uh, I don't know when this is going to air, but the week this is happening, this is you much prefer the lighter shit we're talking about now than what's actually happening in the world. So let's yeah. not even get on that. No. So I'm glad that we chose not to make this political <laughs> show because even though that's What's happening is not purely political. It's mm-hmm. it's still going to come into effect. So yep. <clears throat> just, just bad shit everywhere. Um, good thing I'm not recording with Luke right now. Oh god. So <clears throat> nothing against him. It would just it would come up regardless because he's in a yeah yeah. Anyway, I've never, never met Luke, but I've seen a lot of his episodes and um, I'm funny, funny guy. Next time I, I go to record them, I'll, I'll see. Because I almost have to do stuff with him on the weekends because, you know, he's a contractor, so he's busy during the week. Oh, okay. So there's a good chance that I might can still need to go up there. So um, I think I tried to ask you last time, but I asked way too damn late and you already had plans. So I'm going to try to see if uh, I'll schedule the next one with him and see if we go up there. Be a good time. But, uh, but I mean, this is, this is what this show's about. And I know we say this and we beat it into a bush, but, you know, this is it's what we want. Good friendship therapy, good mm-hmm. conversation. Sometimes I'm doing all the talking. Sometimes I'm laughing at the two idiots sandwiched beside me that are making me look like an idiot, and that's okay. Y'all did a damn good job of it, and it was funny as <laughs> shit to watch. <laughs> There's a few times all I could do was laugh, you know. But you know that's what it's here for. That's and how it's designed. That's how it's designed. So it, it's it's good stuff. And so we'll reflect back. Let's see. We are 35ish minutes since we smoked this. In my opinion, it's still burning pretty pretty damn even, um, except for that one hiccup that I had. That's my fault. So I'm getting, I can definitely get like a, I think I get where they're getting the leather on this one, but I do get more of the like toasted feel. I get a sprinkle of a little like cocoa, and I, I like that they expressed it cocoa, not chocolate, because I don't get the like sweet chocolate feel that you do in some. Um, I kind of get a little cocoa. I get just a little bit of spice. So the, the, the flavors that they said were going to come in later, I get those. I didn't really get the intro stuff. I could smell what I thought was licorice. I thought I could feel it, but it didn't really hang around. Are you able to pull? And I know you pulling flavors out has been a new endeavor. You've always just been like, it's a damn good cigar. Or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like. I do get more on the retro though. There, there's there's a lot more there. Well. I mean, it makes sense too. What, what do you, what's more prominent? I know a lot of people, it's like pepper or nothing. Can you like pull any of the other stuff? So it, I don't know if this is in the notes or anything, but I get something like, like I kind of get the licorice, but more of like a, almost a cinnamon. A little bit. Interesting. 
I don't think that was in there. But that that's what's interesting about profiles, you know, they they blend stuff to have a direction, but some people pull different stuff out of them. Because it's not like they're sprinkling the tobacco with cinnamon. No. It's the mix of the different, you know, flavors that kind of pulls stuff together. It's all the shit that was in the soil that the tobacco grew from. And yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and this is one big benefit of, you know, there's a lot of people now that are saying, like, Cuban cigars aren't the craze anymore. Like, there are some. There are some legitimate Cubans. I'm not going to take that away. But the old school traditional families that started the cigar world to what we know it, most of them left Cuba when they had their issues. So you've got these families that moved and started Nicaragua and Honduras and Dominican and now even, you know, certain areas of Mexico because that ring down there is your perfect humidity point. Mm -hmm. You know, Cuba just happened to be in the good ring of it. Well, they took a lot of those seeds, moved them, and now we've got blends that you're seeing. It's like, you know, you're not just talking about a good... Cuban tobacco leaf. It's like, you know, this one's got multiple countries of tobacco blended. Some will stick to be near Nicaraguan puros. Some will be, and that's the crazy thing. If you, if I was to ask somebody if that's a puro cigar, most people now are not going to assume that you're talking about a pure uh, Cuban. You're going to make the assumption that you're talking about, is it a pure Nicaraguan? Nicaragua has become like the cigar place. Oh. And you know, if it's a Puro now, it's like everything in there from the wrapper to the binder to the filler, like that's all Nicaraguan leaf. That's now what we refer to when talking about Puros. You know, this isn't, this is a blended, but that is actually enabled people to broaden out the flavor profiles that they're able to create in these things because you're getting them from multiple countries, multiple regions. You're still in that humidity part of the, you know, the towards the equator line. But your different regions, different soils, different sunlights, different water treatments from mountains and valleys and stuff. So you're, you're getting this just like super complex availability and flavor. So same with coffee and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly the same as coffee. Coffee, wine. Never what got the it? wine thing though, man. I took wine classes when I was selling liquor, and I don't remember how many weeks I went to this thing. I was just, eh, it's good, you know. It's good. That's all I got out of it. Kind of like with this. It's yep. Or no. There's been a few certain ones that I've liked. Um, and there's been a couple that I wished later because I'm not usually a wine guy. I'm, you know, bourbon and scotch. That's my two go-tos. And I, uh, looking back, I wish I'd have saved the names because I actually have come across, you know, a couple that a couple friends have got me. One was on a cruise ship. That I remember thinking, like, oh, 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 okay, this is some badass wine. Mm-hmm. Was I smart enough to pay attention to what it was? No. <laughs> no. So, I have, I have tried. Um, so I have no idea. I have no idea. You know, We started but, keeping a list. So, the wife gets, you know, she has these, like, wine club subscriptions. Right. So, she'll buy, you know, 12, 15 bottles at a time. We'll go through them. And now it takes us a long time to go through them. She works all the time. She does. But... We find one and we're like, eh, this one's okay. Throw it away or finish drinking and throw the bottle away. But whenever we find one we like, we put it in the list. We save the uh, the cork or the bottle, depending on. And I do the same thing smart. with my bourbon. So That's I have a smart. list of bourbon. Uh, remind me, I'll send you that list. We got yeah. some bangers on there. Always wanted to try new stuff. Yeah. It's like, you know, at, at, like at that Cigar Fest, there was three that I'd never heard of before. One's a scotch. One's a bourbon. One's more of a Japanese whiskey that didn't taste like any freaking thing up ever tasted in my life before they're calling it a whiskey but it's their their style it's badass yeah, like satori's got one there's satori's good i've had satori yeah. um this other one was uh koval dude i mean like there's always something new there's always something to taste it's, it's kind of like cigar world and that's why i think you know the bourbons the spirits all of them kind of go hand in hand with Cigars, because you've got different blends, different profiles, and you know, um, you know, you made a joke about this before, but it's actually pretty true. You're like, well, my cigars taste like beer, because you're normally smoking, drinking a beer. Why I don't drink ever? I'm sorry. <laughs> the beer alternatives. So uh, there's not whiskey alternatives. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I found a zero proof the other day. Like, what I'm, is it? <laughs> I don't know because I was t- next time it was over in Dallas. Um, I know where it's at, what store was at. So next time I go over there, I'll look because I was just too astonished to be like, "What the?" Fuck? Okay, 
Not even out of curiosity. I, nope. Like, I might, I might do it just and bring it to, like, get us together just to see, like, what the fuck. You know, because I'm curious. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You better have a real bottle on backup, though. Oh. Um, if I taste whiskey, I better have some whiskey, damn it. I'll try the zero stuff with you, but... I've got plenty in there to back up. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So... This is going to have to be I've a got, weekend episode. Like the Scots, I've got Deansons and Chivas and Grant. I think on the um, bourbon and whiskey side, I've still got two different Four Roses. I think i got a little Jim Beam left. got the cheaper benchmark that I do if I'm mixing and I don't need the true flavors. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I've got like 10 or 12 in there. So I mean, I've got, we can go ahead and be like, okay, what do you actually need at this taste like? Find you some Shit. Old Forester 1920. Forester's good too. The 1920 will change your life. I want to say I've had it, but I can't tell you for you sure right now. You would remember. Well, I've <laughs> sampled so much shit. <laughs> so, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'll th- next time I'll go over there. Which actually, um, i supposed to go over that way in about a month for a concert. So if I remember, I'll swing back there and grab it on the way out. Just to see. I mean, there's, you know, we now that we are able to... You know, tag the show of purple and log it that it's not for kids and oh. there's explicit material. Like, still can't sponsor anything. Still can't give y'all any links. We can just enjoy it and tell you about it. So I mean, we could definitely try that on the show. Huh. It's like you know, one of the first things we did with Woot that way is you know he brought an Abita testing. You know, he brought us like a flight of different Abita beers. We just made sure to let y'all know, hey, we're not sponsored. This is just us. Huh. So we can we can do that stuff now. Where when we started, we we couldn't because they didn't have the the protocols in place for us to do it without getting, you know, banned because they were dealing with some lawsuits and stuff. So um, we could do that on an episode. I mean, that, that'd be an interesting one. You know, I'll have that and then I'll have some good stuff on standby and Kate. We could surprise us. It could be great. But if it tastes like shit and we're like, what the fuck? Okay, let's bring the real shit. Yeah. We still have a cigar with it too. I believe. Oh, oh, we're going to have a cigar I think with Jeremy it. Cyrus calls that leaf and barrel. That's his, hmm. his, uh, his other... His B side channel and yeah. his second channel. Yep. Pretty pretty cool little idea. I'm cool with that. Yep. It takes a long time to get through an episode, but it seems like a lot of fun to do. Yeah, I would do that as a person. I wouldn't make an episode that long. That's definitely his world. I just It's not my style. You know, I like this time frame where we kinda <laughs> shoot the shit, talk about it, and uh move along with our lives. Yeah. We've got shit to do after this. We've got shit to do after this, you know? Whatever. <laughs> Y'all have shit to do. Um, Ain't nobody got time for that. It's like, I, I, I'm a realist. I appreciate that, you know, all of y'all that watch this, you know, so far in our, we are a young podcast and a young Facebook group, but I usually have, you know, a couple hundred, 300 people that will eventually watch each episode right now. And that grows. Oh, shit. I respect the ones of y'all who actually sit and watch this. Um, my perspective the perfect time to watch this is I recognize not everybody watching this is a cigar smoker. Some of y'all just like the topics and like the, the, the conversation. But if you are a cigar smoker, that's how I would prefer you watching this show. Light one up and let's Light go. one up. If you see the title and you can grab the one we're smoking, smoke it with us and then tell us in the comments what you feel about it because we're all about engagement. But smoke whatever you want to smoke because that's I've got a couple podcasts. That's when I watch them. I'll get home from work I'll sit right over there, which y'all can't see, but it's right off the screen. There's my deck right there. I'll get out there, smoke a cigar, and watch the podcast because I feel like I'm kind of participating. You know, participating, you know. Um, you know. Mm-hmm. So, like, um, I almost got lucky. Um, Sin is actually in Texas right now. Oh, really? As we're filming this. I found out about it way too late, and I messaged her, and I tried to get over there. Um, I, I just couldn't because I had it was too short notice, and I had some work and training and some stuff to do. But I talked to her trying to get over there, and I just couldn't hash it out. But um, you know, that would have been kind of a good way to see somebody. As you get over there, and like, there's a couple stops she's doing that are ticketed events, but a couple of them are she's going to these certain cigar lounges, just meeting and greeting people, spending some time, letting you smoke. Like it's just. Kind of a cool endeavor. And doing the whole networking thing. Doing the whole networking thing, you know? I'm all, building a brand. I'm all about that stuff, you know? Yeah. That's where we are now. And 
you know, the, the way I feel about this is we talk about friendship therapy, but it's really just a good way for us to, you know, to continue that friendship that conversation. And sometimes it's just legit factual stories. And sometimes we are just, you know, shooting the shit and talking about dumb shit and funny shit and retarded shit and makes us laugh and shit and other shit just shit about shit i mean taylor swift and shit taylor swift and shit you know who the fuck is kelsey we don't know it's taylor swift's boyfriend you know <laughs> that's that's what he's down to that's now what he's down to i now. don't know what yeah. you did before but this yeah, is what he, you're doing now and it, it's funny because he was already getting some traction and some memes because he he wanted to change his look so he changed his complete appearance like he went from the ball to the like super thick beard and goatee to straight up like high and tight mustache like night and day that stopped Taylor Swift's boyfriend like people went from talking shit about him to being like oh my god it's like (laughs) you know so you never know what's going to come across this page or anywhere else for that matter but times they are a changing absolutely but is that Anchorman (laughs) Brett would would be proud of you right now how many times have we quoted Anchorman so, I didn't realize this until after I edited. Brett's been on two shows. Mm-hmm. And I don't think he meant to do this. His closing remark in both of them was, fuck, so fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't yeah. realize he said it until I was editing it. And I was like... So I went back and I was like... Son, yeah, that's that's one of those movies I could, I could hit play and I could quote the entire thing. I, I will drive everybody in the room crazy, word for word. That and Boondock Saints. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that. Word for uh, word. Dude, why? There's a no excuse. You live in the modern era. Download that shit. It's just been in a while. No, I mean, I haven't thought about it. Like, I've watched it multiple times. I had a guy when I was in the Marines. I thought that was his favorite. So, like, we watched it That's once a month. Probably and top it's just, three. I just haven't thought about it in a while. Maybe possibly number one favorite movie. I'm about to get it. I mean, I got several places, you know, to watch stuff. If it's not there, I'll go get it. I mean, the good thing with YouTube and Google Play now, if you don't have something, you can download a rent it for like three ninety nine. So fuck it. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure I can find it. Funny random story. We uh, we used a, an excerpt from the end of Boondock Saints where they're in the courtroom. They're getting ready to execute Yakovetta yep. as an intro for one of the songs I wrote when I was playing in metal bands. Nice. It was badass. <laughs> Anywho, yeah, good shit. So. uh Unfortunately, it's that time of the show where we have to say goodbye to our friends. No, oh, but Doesn't you mean, just got here. Just got here, I know. Um, Johnny Bravo always likes to say, we'll still be here smoking the cigar and prepping the next show for you guys. So, um, I'm trying to, you know, we, I know I kind of think I told y'all, if I didn't say it on air, I said it in the, in the, in the Facebook group that... You know, several of us back in the summer, we had a lot of conflicts. I was in the middle of moving. It was very difficult for several months for us to get together. So I was, you know, a month, month and a half between episodes. My goal is to post up one of you guys every two weeks. That's the current goal. And so far, it's rolling that way, and we're going to try to keep it that way. So that means is you see this show, you ready for the next one? Give us a couple weekends. We'll be back with you again. So we'll still be here. Hope you will be too. Next time, we'll come back and talk some even more dumb shit. Yeah. So, you know, um, keep you all coming through. You never know who's going to be over here because that's what makes it fun for you guys is working, like I said, every single one of us, and I'm not exaggerating. It's not like we all work at the same place and have the same rotations. Every single one of us have our own lives, our own schedules, our own relationships, but take all that out, just our work schedules alone. None of us that you've seen on this show have the same work schedule. Different days, nights, times, different rotations. Some are, you know, Monday through Friday, seven on, seven off, two, two, three. Some is a rotational flex. Like, it's just... So, y'all will get to to see different, you know, different faces. You know, I had Johnny on here for several episodes in a row, and then his schedule changed. So, you know, still trying to get him back on. It'll happen. There might be an episode where we just put a broom here in this chair and put my hat on it and he's going to talk to it like I'm here. It's going to be great. I'm still going to watch it. <laughs> that would be fun. But anyway, appreciate you guys for hanging out as always. Uh, Derek, thanks for coming back yeah, as always. Yeah, Good excuse to smoke cigars for yeah. another reason. So as always, y'all stay safe. Take care of yourself. Until next time, 
Stay safe and hollow down. I don't have anything funny to say, but bye. I tried. <laughs> That's good.